In this video, we'll take a look at the ring buffer feature within Wireshark. This is a feature that allows us to capture packets in a continuous fashion. And what the idea is that if we have basically a situation where the issue is random and or sparse in nature, and we're trying to capture packets of the event and or right before the issue occurs, it can be very difficult. So if the event, you know, might occur every couple of days or every couple of weeks or maybe even a couple of months, how do we capture packets right before the event and during the event? And the most common technique to use is a basically ring buffer feature in Wireshark. So the idea would be is we have a computer running Wireshark software and we set up the computer on a managed switch so this would be the destination port. We're going to run something called port mirroring. We are also assuming that the switch itself is a manageable switch. And it doesn't need to be necessarily a high-end switch. There's actually a lot of switches that are very affordable and manageable to offer this feature. For example, what I'll be using in this demonstration is a small business switch from Cisco called SG350. There's also the CBS Cisco business switches 350 and a list of other uh, types of switches uh, that are manageable that can perform port mirroring or also known as port analyzer function. But in any case, so the computer will be on the destination port. So this will be port mirroring and then this will be identified as the port mirror destination port. The source port is going to be the device that's having issues. So let's say we're having DHCP issues. We have a phone here. We're going to configure this as a source port. The computer is on a destination port. Then we're going to configure Wireshark to run the ring buffer feature. And we're going to basically let it run until the issue occurs. And then we're going to stop the actual capture so we have packets right before the issue and during the issue. If this is going to be set up in a remote office, you may want to train somebody there locally so when they notice the issue occurring, the DHCP issue with a phone or IP camera, print server, access point, whatever device might be having an issue, they know, okay, I see the issues occurring with the respective device, and then they can go and stop the packet capture on the PC running Wireshark. Typically not too difficult. You'll see in a few moments here's just one button you'll press within a software and it'll stop the capture. What this is basically going to do, it's going to write the files in a continuous fashion on a PC's hard drive. And it's going to write so many packets per file and so many files. And then it's going to wrap around and delete the oldest. And it'll just do this in a continuous fashion. The other item to be aware is there'll be certain app applications such as Pro Audio Video that may generate very high packet rates. So this is something that you may need to gauge if the application is generating very high packet rates. Is the actual computer that's going to be running Wireshark stable and can it actually keep up with the needed packet rate? Okay, so um, within Wireshark, what we want to do is we want to go up to Capture. We want to go to Options. And then once we're under options, we want to go ahead and select the network card we're going to be performing the capture on. Um, it's always to do a sanity check to make sure this is the proper network card. So if you notice on this computer, I have multiple network cards and it's very easy to select the wrong network card. But in case for this computer, this is the proper network card. So we'll just make sure that this is selected. It'll be kind of a light blue highlight if you notice. Then we're going to go to the tab that says output. And then we're going to go ahead and have a folder. So in this case, I have a folder on my desktop. It's called PCAP. And then within that folder, I'm just going to create a file. In this case, I'm calling it My Packet Capture. The extension is .pcapng. And then we're going to, be, the default is pcap.ng, so we don't need to change this. Next, we're going to select Create a New File Automatically. So that's this option right here. And then we're going to tell it basically to record up to 10,000 packets per file and then use the ring buffer option to record up to 20 files. And then when it gets up to file 20, 
and it needs to go ahead and generate another file. I'll go delete the oldest file and create a new file. So that's what gives it basically the ring buffer effect. So we simply hit start here. And basically it's going to run. What I would recommend is you do some test runs. So let it run for a few minutes, make sure it's stable, make sure that any sleep options on your computer are turned off. So you want to make sure that the computer doesn't go to sleep, the hard drive doesn't go to sleep. Also instruct anybody on site if you are leaving this in a remote site that number one, make sure the computer is secure location, make sure they understand do not turn off the computer. Once the event occurs, you want to definitely train somebody, if this is a remote site, how to stop this and to notify you that the issue event occurred. They went ahead and right after that stopped the capture, so there's evidence exactly what has occurred. And so right now we're showing here in step five that it's been stopped, so this is no longer red. And it kind of just shows all the packets we've captured. And then we're going to go to the folder on our desktop where we have the PCAP recorded at. And then we see all the actual PCAPs. Okay, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the settings within Wireshark that we need to make for the ring buffer option. So we're going to go up to Capture, Options. We're going to make sure we're selecting the proper NIC card that we're capturing the packets from. We're going to go to the Output tab. We're going to go in and point to a folder where we want to have the ring buffer generate the files at. So in this case, I'm doing Desktop My Capture. I'm just going to call this My Capture. And then extension will be PCAP NG. I'm going to hit Save. Okay, we're going to tell it to create a new file automatically and we're going to tell it after 10,000 packets and we're going to tell it to use up to 20 files in the ring buffer. So what this is going to do, it's going to tell Wireshark to go ahead and save the capture in a folder on the desktop called My Capture. The beginning of the file is going to be called My Capture. The extension is PCAPNG. Then what Wireshark is going to do, it's going to actually, within each of the files, it's going to record up to 10,000 packets. And then it's going to do up to 20 files in a ring buffer. So we'll go ahead and start this up right now. And if we go to the actual folder in the desktop, you'll notice that it's actually already started with the first file. Right now, it's actually capturing information or a port mirror where a phone's plugged in. So there's not much activity. In effort to speed things up, what I'm going to do is actually add a multicast application to the network. Okay. The multicast application has started. If you notice, uh, Wireshark's having a really hard time here keeping up. So let's go back to our folder and take a look at it. So if, um, if we take a look at this just for a moment, you'll see that each time that a new entry or a new file is generated by Wireshark, the last one is deleted. So right now we are running a multicast application network, Pro Audio Digital Signal Processor. It's generating thousands of packets per second. So the idea here is basically, um, if you notice the counter 81, then that's going to be deleted as the next one comes up. So it's, it's going through a lot of files. So let me go ahead and stop Wireshark so we can actually take a look at it. So let me stop this. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and open up one of the files in the middle so we can actually look at the packet count. So let me close this. So if you notice everything's stabilized right now, we stopped the Wireshark capture, we close it. We'll go ahead and grab, for example, this file kind of in the middle. So if we look at the very first packet, it's number one. And then if we look at the very last packet in the capture, it's 10,000. So one of the questions might be, why did I choose in, for this capture, ring buffer capture, that up to 10,000 packets per file, up to 20 files maximum for the ring buffer? 
What I found in past years when I was doing testing for high packet rates, just using a standard notebook, when I say st standard notebook, a business enterprise class notebook, Intel enterprise class NIC chipset, and then the um, hard drive was a SSD, enterprise SSD hard drive, so fairly decent notebook. It was an i7. Um, I found a sweet spot where I can pretty much achieve stability in a notebook every time was able to consistently record without issues. If I limited the capture up to 10,000 entries per file and up to 20 files, if I was to exceed that, then typically I would start seeing issues. However, when you're watching this video, things may have changed as far as CPU, DRAM, storage performance, etc., etc. Also, the version of Wireshark, as of the recording of this video, this is the latest version, 3.4.9. However, when you're viewing this, there may be a new version. So you definitely should do your own independent testing to figure out if you have a situation where you're doing high packet rate captures, typically relating to pro audio, pro video, data center, or if you're a service provider and you have large amounts of traffic, consistent traffic, so you want to determine what is a stable number as far as how many packets per file can be recorded and how many files can be recorded in a ring buffer where there won't be any type of hiccups or crashes with Wireshark. The other item is what is the actual throughput that the actual notebook or PC or server is going to be using for the acquisition can sustain. Past years when I was doing testing, what I found was, again, with the enterprise class notebook, SSD, it has 16 gigs of RAM, i7, generally right around the low 200 megabits per second was kind of the high watermark. If I tried pushing it into mid 200s, the notebook would run into issues where it couldn't sustain that. So I might be able to get 30 seconds of capture time, maybe 45, maybe a minute. If I put bare metal Linux on it, I might be able to push it a little, a little bit further. Typically, I was seeing maybe 10 to 12% performance increase doing bare metal Linux, but again, not a huge difference, but there's some difference. So this is probably where you want to spend some time to understand exactly, you know, what are the thresholds if you have a situation where you have to do high throughputs. If it's just something really simple like a phone or a PC and there's no real high throughputs to consider, then this really is a moot point as far as um, having to do additional testing. So you can basically use the settings that I was using. The other item also we should take a look at is the actual switch itself. So one of the key things here is going to be we're assuming you have a managed switch. And in a managed switch, this is a uh, small business managed switch that I'm showing here. Very common. A lot of folks have the SG series. Also, there's a newer series called the CBS, Cisco Business Switches, 350 series also. Uh, they're very common. A lot of smaller businesses, also pro audio video applications, etc., etc. But what you want to make sure in your managed switch is you're configuring something called port mirroring or SPAN, switch port analyzer. So basically what the idea is, we want to make sure that we identify what the source port is. In this case, we had a phone on a source port. We identified it on Gigabit Ethernet 2. And there's different ways of identifying MAC address of the phone. You can do show CDP neighbor, show LDP neighbor, etc., etc. And then the destination port is this PC where actually we are running Wireshark on. So basically we configure the source session here. Um, it's going to be sourcing from Gigabit 2. The destination session, which is actually configured on this other menu here, is going to be Gigabit 7 where the PC with Wireshark is running. Hopefully this video um, helps you with your Wireshark activities doing the ring buffer capture. Again, this is a very useful technique if you're trying to capture different type of random issues that, that are sparse in nature, meaning days, weeks, maybe months pass by. Hopefully this video helps you with the ring buffer, Wireshark capture. Thank you for watching the video and good luck with your Wireshark activity. Thank you. Bye.